Greeting my friends, this is Jose from Connecticut and happy Monday to all of you. Uh, I have to dash out the door very fast. So I wanna do a very quick teaching here on continuing with our series on understanding the power of God within us, part four. And I wanna take you to Ephesians chapter three, verse 16 and 17. Paul says here, this is his prayer that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Verse 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith and that you being rooted and grounded in love. Okay, a few things that I want to uh, stress to you here. The word that he would grant you really is the word that he would give you. And the, the the nature of God is always to give. He's a giver. He's a giver. And when someone is giving, our job is to receive what is given. This is why we've been talking about permitting and loosening uh, as the keys of the kingdom of heaven because it all has to do with receiving sometimes things that the giver of all givers, God himself, wants to give to us. So he says that God would grant you according to the riches of his glory. Now, glory, I would say that the best way to define glory is to make the invisible God become visible. God cannot be seen, but when his glory shows up in signs and wonders or, or, or power or, or, or healings, that's where people see him and people feel his tangible glory. Now, Glory comes from a word in the Greek, which is called, in the Hebrew, which is kabod. The Hebrew word for glory is kabod, and that's K-A-B-O-D. And that comes from the word to wait. Now, wait, I'm not talking about waiting, W-A-I-T. I'm talking about weight as in heavy, as in pounds, W-E-I-G-H-T. So really, the glory <laughs> could be Describe as the weight of God. The more glory, the more weight of God that we see. So here Paul is telling us that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, to the, to the riches of his manifestation, to the riches of his weight. Now, according to the riches of his glory, mean it means that all the glory of God available to human beings all the glory of God that is available to human beings, God wants to freely give to us. I don't know how much glory God has. I think when we get to heaven, we'll see that there's a lot more glory than what he shows us on earth. But on earth, according to the riches of his glory, that means that he is not skimping out. He's not cutting out. He's not shutting us out from any of the glory. We have the whole availability of his glory available to people as much as people can manifest God as much as God can be seen here on earth God is making God is giving to us if we have if we are obedient and have the ability to receive he says that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit into the inner man I said everything has to do with, with the spirit is not in the inner man it's into the inner man everything has to do with the whole way, the whole key of operating in the power of God in signs and wonders is to live a life that is focused into our spirits. The more that we focus our, our sight and our hearing into the Spirit of God who lives in our spirit, the more that we'll see signs and wonders. Everything is for the inner man, not for the outer man. You, you understand that? God's not concerned about the outer man. The outer man is going to die. He's concerned about strengthening your inner man. So everything has to do with into the inner man. So then it says in verse 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love. What does that mean? Everything has to do with Christ. We're nothing. We're nothing. Everything that God does is for the sake of his son, Jesus Christ. Everything is for the sake of his son, Jesus Christ. The only reason why we benefit from God is because, as I told you yesterday, and look at my teaching from yesterday, if we're a Christian, we've been placed. Here's Christ, 
and here's me. Before I became a Christian, I was here and Christ was here. When I accepted Jesus Christ, I was put into Christ. So what happens to Christ happens to me What hap because I'm in Christ. So when we're talking about God benefiting and God blessing and God prospering and God giving wealth and God giving glory, it's really for His Son. His Son paid the price. It, we... We, we didn't do anything. It's His Son. It's His beloved Son. But because we're in His beloved Son, we, we, um, we enjoy the privileges that God is pouring and blessing His Son with. So, but the beautiful thing about that is that the whole key then is, is, is in Christ Jesus in us. Christ Jesus is the healer. Christ Jesus is the Redeemer. Christ Jesus is the is the blesser. And then I've also taught you that, well, I'm that's too complicated right now. Too complicated. But anyways, so everything is for the benefit of of God. So if God is gonna move in power, if God's gonna do signs and wonders, if God's gonna do miracles, if God's gonna do healings, it's not gonna be because of us. It's because of Christ Jesus in us who is worthy to receive the honor and the power and the glory and the might and the dominion. So what we want is to Christ, we want Christ to dwell in us. In other words, we want Christ to become visible in us, right? We want Christ to be glorified in us. It's in proportion to how much Christ is made visible in our lives. It's the proportion that we'll see healings, that we'll see miracles. It's not because we just pray for a person and the person gets healed. The more that Christ is manifested in us, the, Christ, the uh, more that Christ is made revealed in us, the more that Christ is made tangible in us, the more the healings will take place, the more the miracles will take place. So everything has to do with how much Christ is manifested in us. How much Christ is revealed in us? How much is Christ made visible in us? So that's why verse 17 is after verse 16. Because God says that He would give you according to the riches of His glory. And then verse 17 says that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. You understand that? God gives us all the all the dimensions of His glory. God gives us the ability to receive the glory of God in our lives. God gives us the ability to make Christ visible. In other words, God's given us the riches. God's given us the full riches of making Christ visible through us. Hallelujah. God's given us all that we need so that Christ could become visible through us. His glory is His visibility. God gives us according to the riches of His glory so that Christ may dwell, He may come to dwell, reside, and become visible in us. You understand that? So that's, that's my teaching for today. And it's all in our ability to permit, to receive, to allow, to submit, to yield. The more that we do that, God can make Christ as visible as He can become on earth through you and me today. And through that visible Christ, we will start to operate in a ministry of signs and wonders and healings and miracles. In Jesus' name, Amen.